welcome back to part two of painting the sand dollar and I am painting the designs on the top of the sand dollar the little five part sort of flower floret uh, design and I'm mixing a gray and you can see that piece of scrap paper beside me that I'm testing my gray and the saturation of it before I put it on that beautiful white sand dollar I don't want to do it too dark or too light or do too much washing out I want it to be good the first time so I'm going to test my paint I've mixed a gray using the complementaries of the permanent rose and the viridian green but that was a little bit too brown so I added cobalt blue to gray it down a little bit and the first I'm using a very small brush too I'm, I'm using a number two but a number one or a number two would be good and the first design is quite sharp so I did that with a fairly dry brush pointed and then to the outside line is fuzzy so I wet the paper first not everywhere I just wet that little line very gently to get a fuzzy outline around the first one and now I'm putting a little shadow just around those holes in the sand dollar and I'm going to put some shading on the top of the sand dollar to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional so I'm mixing in some permanent rose with the gray mix very watery and I'm going to spread it around with a wet brush so that it's not too dark but it's going to give a little bit of shadow to the left hand side of the sand dollar and if I put it on the sand dollar and it's too dark immediately I get I get my wet brush and I spread it out a little bit when you see me going off to the left there I'm actually dabbing my wet brush on the cloth so that it's not dripping wet I don't want to have too much water on there I'm painting those little stripes on the stripy rock which looks a little bit like a humbug to me but I've mixed now some burnt sienna with that gray mix to make it more brown and over to the side there'll be still the, the slightly blue mix I'll dip into the the bluish gray and then into the brownish gray to make the stripes now I've dipped into my green over there the green that I made with raw sienna and um, cobalt blue and a little bit of burnt sienna and I make sure I keep all these colors in my palette until I'm completely finished so I have a, a lot of different mixes to choose from I'm putting those stripes on in the direction of the rock you notice I sort of bring the stripe up and around the rock to give the rock some shape and after I've done that I will put a little bit of bluish gray very watery to make a shadow just cast by the sand dollar I don't want to have the shadow too deep at this point because I'll wash out all those stripes too much and I don't want that I can put a darker shadow on later and I think I do if I remember correctly when you're painting in the rocks you have to be very careful that you don't go too dark I think when I'd finished the painting I did think I'd gone too dark with the rocks and I wished that I had left them a little lighter but that's a decision you don't always make at the time and that's why I sometimes paint something two or three times practicing each time uh, how it's going and that's the beauty of doing these little paintings too if you do a little painting and doesn't take too much time and you can work out some ideas later you might want to use that exact same composition and idea to do a much bigger painting but you will have worked through the bugs and figured out what you want to do with your painting now painting the rest of the rocks is is fairly slow and I sort of get quite lost in the the task I'm wetting the top of this rock now I'm wetting it so that I have a nice soft highlight on top of the rock I don't want to put too much paint on the top and I want the highlight to just blend and look rounded so I'm putting my gray mix I'm still dipping in that gray mix but every so often I'll put some more cobalt blue in the mix or some more burnt sienna in the mix now it's got it's quite heavy on cobalt blue maybe a little ultramarine and notice how I go very dark at the bottom of the rock now at the bottom of the rock it's not wet so the color will be much darker and as it bleeds up the rock to that wet patch at the top it will just blend in very softly and I just want water at the top so that it's got a nice highlight on there while the while the paint's still wet I can go in and I can add a little bit more pigment and you have to be very careful not to add 
more water because if you add more water you'll get all your color washed out I'm mixing a nice reddish brown for the other rock and I've mixed um, a lot of burnt sienna a little bit of ultramarine blue and some permanent rose put it on the rock and felt that it was it was much too dark to start with I should have wet the top of that rock too so I'm using my water to fix that washing out that first bit of paint that I put on there and now I'm putting darker paint towards the bottom of this rock and this will just be a first coat I will be putting some other shadow and a bit more paint on this rock when it's dry and again more pigment at the bottom of the rock and I make a little bit of pigment on that blue rock for complementary shadow so I've got a nice reddy brown shadow against a bluey gray rock what I'm doing now is using my thirsty brush which means I clean the brush and dry the brush and then lift a little bit of paint off while it's still wet I'm putting in some blue gray shadow underneath still wet and wet and some shadow under the sand dollar one that's mostly ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt sienna in there to darken it up and I'm adding more burnt sienna to that mix now which makes it really nice and dark and a bit more shadow still want more shadow next to that sand dollar now I've skipped ahead a little bit uh, so I can upload this to YouTube easily I found out that you can only upload 15 minutes of video without having to pay money that's why this is in two parts but that's workable that's doable and you get the gist of what I'm doing each rock is sort of painted the same I'll probably wet the top of the rock and put some brownie gray mix or some bluey gray mix under the rock and each one one at a time I work around the painting so some of them can dry while I work on ones in other areas and uh, this took me a lot longer. I've speeded this up for you and cut some bits out, but it, it took me, I think, two or three hours and I let one coat dry overnight before I started again. And I sort of make decisions as I go. Like I said, I, I felt that I got a little bit too dark and in a moment you'll see me uh, washing back some rocks and adding some highlights and sort of fixing what I thought was a mistake on my part about poor poor judgment about how dark to go and that's why most artists will do two or three color sketches before they start on their finished piece or on a bigger painting they want to work out all those bugs with some small paintings and practice ones and I this rock this sort of brownie red rock I'm putting some green shadow underneath when you use your complementaries they set off the colors and make beautiful dark transparent shadows that work much better than just trying to make a, a darker brown for your shadow that becomes very dull and dead just a little bit of the complementary color in the shadow livens up your color and makes a lovely dark shadow for you And like I said, I've, I have speeded this up to twice the speed. So when you're painting your rocks or your sand dollar, you know, you need to go nice and slow. Take your time to sort of lose yourself in the task. And mix the colors up. If you've got a blue gray rock, put a brown rock close to it. And if you've got a pinky brown rock, put a green rock close to it. Now what I'm doing here is creating more rocks. I've got a bristle brush, one that I use for oil and acrylic painting, so it's, it's quite harsh. And I'm cleaning it each time, scrubbing off some of the paint and then dabbing with a nice soft Kleenex tissue. I prefer a Kleenex tissue to a, a rag or a kitchen towel. Kitchen towel has a design in it, which can sometimes end up on your paper and your paint rags probably going to have water and dirty paint and things on it that will spoil your painting. Kleenex tissue, lovely and soft. The only thing you have to be very careful with is not to scrub too hard. Now this, because I just wanted to use a more 
um, affordable paper for demonstration it's 90 pounds like I said I prefer 140 pounds but on this little one here I almost scrape the paper away so do be careful and make sure that you wait until these scraped areas are dry before you work on them because the paper will be very delicate much more so when you've washed it back so I'm going to go work on this greenish colored rock set off nicely in front of the reddish brown rock two complementary colors for those two rocks and first coat on the green rock I'll be putting some more shadow on that later and at, at this point it's it's sort of a case of going back and forth between the rocks and adding a little bit more shadow maybe taking off wiping off a little highlight a bit more shadow on that browny grey rock especially next to the sand dollar you want the sand dollar to really stand out so it needs to have dark around it and now I've got out my bleed proof white I'm going to put some white rocks in there some highlights and I like the bleed proof white best of all I've tried uh, white watercolor paint which just seems to fade into the background. I've tried white gouache which again fades into the background. Uh, white acrylic will be too shiny and you can't paint over the top of it with watercolor once you put the white acrylic down that's it. It's, I mean, it's quite good for splatter but this bleed proof white is beautiful. It's, it still stays white but you can paint over the top of it. It becomes just like paper and you'll see these little white rocks that I'm putting in here to break up the foreground. I'm going to paint a little bit of very light blue over those when they're dry, just so they're not quite so stark white. They have a little bit of shadow, but it, it breaks up the design. And I'm doing a little bit of speckle on top of the, the rocks with the white. It used to always be such a, um, I don't know what to call it, dogma that, in watercolor you don't use white and and I've never really liked it because it does make the paint op opaque and takes away from the transparency but for things like this where you can add these lovely little highlights right at the very end a little bit of stripe on the rock I think it's fabulous and really when you're painting you can use any medium any tool to get the effect you want for your art piece not just painting for any type of art what you want to use whether it's gluing on tissue paper or using gold paint or mixing acrylic with watercolor it doesn't matter if you get the desired result what you want to get in your painting and i think i really have to let go of some of those dogmas of watercolor don't use white don't use black don't do this do whatever you want whatever works and I, I especially like to have a little bit of control with the highlights at the end because you don't, you, you sometimes forget to leave them. You, you change your mind afterwards. You can't get that crisp look with the masking fluid even. It's very difficult to paint with masking fluid. Oh. And after I've put on those whites, I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow on them and a, a few shadows and highlights on some of the rocks. And that helped fix everything. And I'm almost finished. And I created quite a few extra rocks with my my brushing back technique, scrubbing out technique. And I'm I'm almost finished now. This is quite this is quite a it looks quite challenging when you see the finished picture, but really it's it's just one rock at a time, one pebble at a time, and you get to practice your color mixing, you get to practice that uh, wetting and, and uh, putting on your color around the wet highlight, practice some scrubbing out and washing back. And look how white the sand dollar looks.